My name is Ana Lopico. I'm the director, the academic director of the King Juan Carlos Center. Um, and it's my pleasure to do today to um, welcome you uh, to a space that's the, whose walls are being taken over uh, intellectually and uh, in terms of our of space uh, to think about the politics of space and incarceration and activism. My role today is to introduce uh, Marisa Velutei Goitia, um, and I dare you to say that four times fast. <laughs> Um, who, who we are extremely honored and delighted to welcome this semester and this year as the Andres Bello Chair at the King Juan Carlos Center. The chair, so, so that you know, is uh, bestowed once a year or once every two years to a leading scholar, artist, writer uh, that works on Latin America and is named after the, the public intellectual, philologist, constitutional scholar, uh, writer, uh, Andres Bello. Um, it was established as an endowment and allows us to bring remarkable scholars whose work uh, from throughout the Americas um, rests here with us and involves our graduate students and our, and our public. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Marisa, though many of you may already uh, know who she is, um, but it's only fitting that um, that we welcome her and her and celebrate her qualifications. Uh, Marisa Belustegui Goitia is a full professor at the School of Humanities at the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Mex Mexico, which is otherwise known as UNAM. Uh, she is a, a rare, true uh, practitioner uh, of, of public scholarship and activism. She, her PhD was in ethnic studies uh, uh, with an emphasis on women, race, and sexuality uh, from the University of California at Berkeley. Um, and her work now uh, still rests around that connection between, uh, between women uh, and power and pedagogy um, and the connections between institutions that discipline and hold the lives uh, of, of women. Um, she is not only a full professor at the UNAM, but she's advisor to the Comisión de Derechos Humanos del Distrito Federal, that's uh, the, the city of Mexico. She has served at the UNAM as a builder of programs, uh, of the gender studies program in particular, uh, a pioneering uh, 10 years uh, there. Her scholarly work and activism engage that relationship between critical pedagogy and artistic and juridical practices. Um, bringing gender critique into engagements that focus on women's access to justice. Today she's going to talk about women's work uh, in prisons and the art uh, that, is, that, is, that, that connects the scholar um, and, uh, and the activist and the subject before the law. Professor Velastegui Goitia is director of the project Mujeres en Espiral, Sistemas de Justicia, Perspectiva de Género y Pedagogías en Resistencia, which we can translate as spiral turns, juridical systems, gender perspective, and pedagogies in resistance. Uh, an academic and activist initiative that fosters women's access to real justice through practices, through the law, through interventions in prison. That project, Espiral, Mujeres en Espiral has produced a, a variety of visual, textual, and legal and juridical material, from murals in prisons to fanzines to documentaries and short films, uh, amicus curiae, benefits for women in prison, reports on violation of, of rights uh, in female prisons, among others. And she's created the clinic of public interest, the Clinica de Interes Público, Maricela Escobedo, uh, a clinic that works with cases of female uh, mistreatment by, by women before the law. Um, she currently the, cl the the clinic Maricela Coedo, um, the legal part of the project that that Marisa directs is working on three cases of women mistreated by the legal system in Mexico and is uh, its cases are waiting to be resolved right by the Corte Suprema uh, in Mexico. So this is someone whose work extends constantly beyond uh, beyond the university and brings its authority to to intervene in the lives of of everyday folk, but also in, in the legal history and precedence of, its, of, of Mexico. 
her, her, her work, which is interdisciplinary uh, and, and spans an extraordinary writing uh, and publication um, a, a record, which I can go through in a minute, but I'm going to hold back at her request a little bit, um, to, to being a filmmaker. Um, she has won a series of, of awards um, and recognized in the Academy and by activists and by human rights institutions. She won the first the first prize, uh, Mujer y Publicidad, uh, in Guadalajara for a campaign that was created by the gender studies program she directed. So when you ask yourself, how does activism work? How does the university create the possibilities for interventions in civil society? You can sort of read Marisa's biography. Um, uh, I, I want to cederle la palabra, and but before then, I, I want to just tell you some of her books so you can look for her for her work. Um, uh, she, her edited volumes and books include Critical Terms in Caribbean and Latin American Thought um, in collaboration with Yolanda Martinez San Miguel and Bensi Fuentes, Desposesión, Dispossession, Gender, Territory, and the Fight for Self-Determination, which was edited with uh, Josie Saldaña, who's a professor here and is, is teaching uh, with Professor Velaute y Goitia this semester, Pintar los Muros, Deshacer la Cárcel, uh, murals in Female Prisons, at the un which is published by UNAM, Pedagogías en Espiral, Spiral Pedagogies, Turns in Gender Study and Critical Theory, um, and Race and Gender in the Creation of New, new Worlds, which was published in 2009. Uh, Marisa is also, to me, has, has made an extraordinary and precious contribution by translating, teaching and researching the work of Chicanas and Chicana Theory. She's the, the translator of uh, Gloria Saldúa's Borderlands, La Frontera. Uh, and, and the work of Chela Sandoval. Um, during her stay, she will she is teaching uh, a graduate called called graduate course called um, Art Activism and the Academy, um, and she is organizing an extraordinary symposium uh, called Critical University Critical Dissidents, which we hope you will be able to attend on April 25th and 26th. Today, she's going to introduce. Uh, one of her works that come from her life and practice as a filmmaker. Um, and I'm not going to talk about it in detail because I want Marisa to, to introduce um, this, this remarkable project. Um, it, it, it's, it's humbling to, to welcome someone who's, uh, who's the real deal, who's, who's, who's actually transcended uh, all the theorizations, uh, all the, the trajectories that the academy prepares you for and puts it uh, into the service of justice. Um, so it's my, my pleasure to introduce the Andres Bello Chair for 2019, Marisa Velotegui Yeah. Thank you, Anna. What a wonderful, I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> wonderful <laughs> introduction. Thank you so much. It was really beautiful. I want to thank you, Anna, for having me here at this wonderful center, and thank uh, Laura Turegano for making my life so easy and, and wonderful and luminous all these days, and Angel Antonio Ruiz and Santiago Barcaza, th these poets and these great neighbors that have helped me also with the imaginary way of thinking of this project, and Luis Perez, ¿verdad? Es Perez, and Luis, Luis Perez also. It's the staff of this wonderful center, incredible people. In, in a daily life, you know, you can be incredible once, but if you're constantly incredible, it's really, it's really <laughs> fantastic. I love it. Okay, I'm going to give like some remarks, it's about 15 minutes, and, and, the, and the documentary is 56 minutes, but I, I want to make a, like a frame for this, for this movie. It's a complex work and it's a very hard, but also very intense and very productive. Creon to Antigon. You knew it was against the law, Antigon. Well, if you call that law, Zeus does not. Justice does not. The dead do not. What they call law did not begin today or yesterday. When they say law, they do not mean a statute, statute of today or yesterday. They mean the unwritten, unfailing, eternal ordinance of the gods that no human being can ever outturn. 
Of course I will die, and death is fine. This has no pain. To leave my mother's son lying out there unburied, that would be pain. The women you are about to see in this uprising are a mixture of mothers, sisters, daughters, indigenous women, mestizas, half-breed, who fall prey to extremely unclean juridical procedures. That does not mean that they are innocent, but was Antigone the one who disobeyed the law of the city and the state to bury her brother innocent? According to Hegel and to Steiner, she was obeying other kind of laws, the ones that respond to kinship, to blood, and to a very complex form of love that the state cannot account for. Las Madres de la Plaza de Mayo, the mothers of the 43, would sustain the subordination of the state to the obedience of consideration of such laws. This is being studied intensively by feminists, critical theorists, and you remember Antigona's claim of Judith Butler. Antigone shows that women responding to love is the first step to crime. What kind of hinge opens love to be the trap, the fault line, where they enact their most comprehensive and far-reaching woman act? What type of love diminishes and affects them to the degree of imprison imprisoning them? It sounds romantic, the prison, the absolute embrace of love. In this case, the prison is gray, cold, and has thick and heavy walls. It is of these walls I want to speak, the ones that imprison women and the ones that they also resist and sometimes take. There are other walls that this documentary addresses, the academic ones, the walls that enclose or open the university to social urgencies, to contagion, and to the production of a kind of knowledge that inclines, tilts, and precipitates to make itself present in such scenarios as prison, transcending borders of disciplines and regulated academic sites. It is of this tilting pedagogies, tilting this inclination, this precipitation methodologies of access inclination that this documentary talks about. It depicts zones, zooms close, uh, it depicts zooms close to the errands, ambulance, gravitation of the classroom walls to precarious places and towards the questioning of the critical nature of an, our universities through its implication in what, in what the colonial studies calls saberes útiles, ecología de saberes, or towards the interruption of what Sylvia Winters calls inner eyes. The narrow horizon of visibility of university knowledge production and expansion. So this is a documentary about women criminals. As criminal is Antigone, who are accused of helping, collaborating, intervening in criminal, deviant actions of their husbands, brothers, fathers, of their families. What would be the paintings that Antigone would have left in the cave if instead of a rope, they would have given her a brush and painting? In El Sol Cuadrado, Maeva Reyes narrates the story of an Ecuadorian woman that was recruited by a drug dealer through love and who accepted the mula job, apparently an easy one. His beloved told her that they needed a responsible, hardworking, honest woman in need of money. At the moment when she had to swallow the pills, she, had, she was alone. The pills would, of course, the drug, no? They left me alone in the room and, want, and went to talk about business. They believe women are not to be there when men are together, and mostly when they talk about business. This is not to say that all women are innocent, although at least a third of them really are, or not very smart to detect perils and illegal business. This is to say that we have to study with mo much more intensity and attention and with more conceptual filters and turns that which may illuminate the nature of crimes done by women when love or the family is involved. And most of all, the notion of family, love and care from a gender perspective and the sexual gender division of labor in criminal scenes. Women are visible, caught fragrantly, the most vulnerable link of crime organization. They get little money, risk the most, and end up, and end up in jail. Men normally work hidden, they plan, get the money, and are not caught, at least not fragrantly. This documentary tries to hear this woman, but not through the description, description of their crimes or through testimonies that allude to their suffering or all the wrongs done by the juridical system, but through the colors they manage to imprint to the gray and dirty prisons walls of Santa Marta, Acatitla, and Mexico City. The women prisoners are heard through the intervention of two institutions or practices that tilt towards social urgencies and turn 
them into active part of the knowledge that is produced about them. Muralism and the pub public university. They let us see who they are when they paint, when they confront juridical, gender, economic, and the economic nature of the walls that imprison them. Although the context and meaning of murals vary, two functions endure, educating and arousing, enchanting, giving pleasure. But how do these two institutions, muralism and the university, twist and turn when the walls that are intervened are prison walls? What is the function of art in academia and academia in strongly deprived spaces such as prison? What are the negotiation, actions, maneuvers to take over those kind of walls? That means to incline university towards prison, but and prison all also to the university. It's not only that we go there and remain clean, is that we want to be contagious, to the contagion also of prison inside the university. It's, it's, it's not a clean procedure. You, you, you end up being, um, the, the, the presas, the, the women in prison, end up being students, and the students end up being uh, academics and intellectuals that understand the nature of incarceration. What kind of agents should the public university be in relation with punishment and incarceration? How can the academic world intervene against state failure, such as mass incarceration and incarceration of the poor? In which ways are American universities intervening in the issue of mass incarceration? How do they respond to such state measures? To which extent are universities complicit with this kind of state actions? What is at stake is the existence, the preservation and appearance of the critical university. This documentary shows the ways in which a public university interrupts, intervenes in state policies of incarceration through the taking over of prison walls and the expansion of academic ones. It depicts a very precise displacement. The project Spiral Women, Juridical System, Gender Perspective and Tilting Pedagogies began with a, requ began with a request, more with a cry, a demand from a group of female prisoners of Santa Marta Catitla in Mexico City, as one of the female prisoners expressed. This was the origin of the uprising. We wanted color. Color is life, she, she was explaining. No tones of color equals to variation of voices, life, and movement. Prison is monochromatic. How may color transform, reduce, and isolated individuals into collectives of trust and consciousness? A, tri a type of trust, not complete trust, but a type of trust inside jail. In which, in which ways does color enhance subjectivity and the narrative that may constitute strong and accurate arguments for justice? Women prisoners wanted to paint a particular space. The selection of space is extremely significant when painting murals. They selected the huge spiral staircase located in the main patio where women wait for the visit, a spiral ca case that connected the outside with the inside in the center patio. Women ascend these stairs when they begin their liberation process and their families descend in the rare case of visitation. They are much aband very abandoned. Women prisoners demanded prison authorities the surrender of its walls. What? What a thing, no? A collective and a group of students, artists, activists, faculty members, and academics, feminists, visual artists, activists, law students, social workers, and educators argued with the prison authorities about the convenience of decorating their walls. The negotiation with authorities work under the notions of hidden transcript by Scott. Women prisoners alluded to the docile and animated spirit that color would provoke on them. Authorities agreed to let the women paint the prison walls. The project we turn in is very different of what turned out to be the murals. Such sur surprises are also present in the history of muralism in Mexico. The Supreme Court murals designed by Orozco in 1940, when the Supreme Court building, this beautiful building was built, uh, and Rafael Calduro's um, murals in the Supreme Court in 2010, were strongly criticized and almost erased by juridical authorities. He's depicting sequestro and by, by police and um, de demonstrations and prisons. Here he is in prison with us. And here, this is another kind of love. This love is, is okay. Okay, the mural project alludes to two foundational moments of Mexican history. The Mexican Revolution, 1910-1921 marks the origin of muralism. One morning during the summer of 1910, a group of independent young artists headed by Dr. Attle demanded 
violently Justo Osiria, chair of the Ministry of Education, to deliver the walls of the recently constructed building of the National Theatre. This group of young artists initiated the movement of modern muralism. I tend to think of, of this woman like that. I mean, it was not easy that uh, Justo Sierra gave the, the mur the, los muros, no? It, it, what a solicitation, no? Dame los muros de tu edificio, give me the walls of your building, no? And what a solicitation in prison to ask for the walls, no? That confine you, no? And reduce you. But uh, we can t talk later about it if you if you want about the about the whole negotiation of how to get prison walls. Imagine scaffolds, no? Building scaffolds in prison is also a rare object, no? The muralists that coordinate the work uh, in prison, Gustavo Chavez Pavón and Polo Castellanos, are part of the Zapatista movement. This is the second historical thing that is very important. Not only that it is uh, um, a fight to ask for the walls, and has been, but also that uh, the, the muralists were connected very intimately with the Zapatista movement. And they were also the muralists of the murals of the caracoles, which are spirals. And the, this notion of spiral in the Mayan imaginary and aesthetic world is also one notion that inspired the muralists and also inspired the resistant maneuvers of, of the of women in prison. The workshop in prison of muralism, the stilting pedagogies, we read Ansaldúa and Chela Sandoval. We also get involved with visual, visual discourse and performance. We read Gomez Peña, Wolfer. We showed the photographs of Didi Huberman and, of course, translated it in, in, in very interesting uh, and basic ways. And gender. This represented the opportunity to produce images along certain words, a strategic manifestation of counter vision, as the fragmentation of unitary hegemonic vision o and of the control of what can and cannot be seen. Prison is filled with visual prohibitions. Mirrors and photographs are prohibited. The appropriation and design of walls inaugurated different modalities of visuality in women. On the, that particular frame of visual rights, the demand for color and visual narration could not be more pertinent. The prison gaze, the panoptico, panoctibon and surveillance saw only color, which was hard to defend since part of the punishment is life in gray. Women prisoners named the first mural the cry, and the last, the fourth, collective actions towards justice. From cry, the demanda llamado, to action. In between, we build strength, time and hope, fuerza, tiempo y esperanza, and forms and ways of freedom. This is the, the third one. And this is the apando, el área de castigo, donde, where they reduce women when they take drugs or are caught by taking drugs or, or, or they're disobeyed. They, and we, we paint that zone, which was very interesting because we co they were collaborating. And we didn't get this in the movie, but they were crying through the barras and saying, put that color, pasame el pincel. And we're looking through that angle of vision and participating in the, in the design of the third mural. In the midst of the process from the cry to action, we detected a very dramatic and interesting case that could be part of the strategic juridical litigation done by the clinic Maricela Escobedo. In the fourth mural, um, it, we were painting for four years, almost five, and uh, we got the, the moment, it's explained in the, in the documentary, to build a uh, clinica de litigio estratégico. So not only the poetic justice and not only that the women would uprise and stay on their feet and talk in a meaningful and strong way, but that we have lawyers there and that we have a space where students could be educated and formed in a twisted way. Pedagogues, anthropologists, sociologists, uh, human rights fighters and law students were formed in this in this clinic and were actually we had classes inside prison with with the women there. The mural appeared appealed for the construction of. Oh, I, I was about to tell you the first case that we that we selected was Karen, the, and we call it the evil mother, a young woman accused. The name of the delito, the 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 crime is incredible. Se llama así. Asesinato, homicidio, en razón de parentesco por omisión. That means a homicide, being a family, 
omission is by omission. So uh, you don't do, you cannot do nothing to to prevent the death of your of your child. So you are accused in the same measure as the the one that. It's not uh, no. It's, it's that you didn't do uh, anything, and only women are accused of this crime. There is not a single man have been accused of omission. No, it has to do with negligence, but it's is is uh, that you ca you you cannot prevent no and this woman was in in another place and i mean they they expect that women should be there 24 hours to protect their their kids no it's amazing this mural appeals for the construction of a collect of, of a collectivity of women inside prison accused of abandoning their children there were a significant number of women accused of omission and of being like it's not complice. It's it, this is these are different delitos, different crimes. It's it's being that you didn't do nothing. They accuse you of doing nothing. So the, these women in the first uh, mural, they they created a, a collectivity and they paint each other's um, drawing and they they talked and had conversation, of course, about the colors and the forms, but also about justice and their cases. No? So this uh, the conversation of content and form and justice arose by contiguity, uh, what Rancière and Deleuze called pictorial dia diagrams. Women in prison are advised to stay away from each other. The fear of becoming the other, this unwanted woman that has been punished, is interrupted through the act of painting as giving collective as giving collective form to woman visual horizon. This was the third mural. This is the fourth. And, and you see the, the panoptic tower. So when we got close to, to the exit, w close to the panoptic tower, more observed, there was when the clinic was born. Women do time defeated, dislocated by guilt and time. More than 80% are in between 18 and 35 years old, and 86% are mothers. They have left behind in between three or six, maybe more kids, each one. In a high percentage, they are the bread provisors, providers of the home. Only 3.6 of the sentences could receive an alternative punishment to prison. Of almost 100% regarding pity crimes, most, most, much, most of them related with addiction and participation in narcomenudeo, in, in selling drugs, no? but it's, it's very, very small portions. In reality, the wrong done, as this first mural, mural underlines, signals the effect of being constructed as a woman. The cry points to the fact that most of the female prisoners are in prison because of minor crimes, non-violent ones like law, drug, commercialization, and minor robbery in 95%. The incarceration of women in Mexican prisons is unbelievably high, and the use of prison is, is abusive. During 2013, 96.5 of guilt sentences led to imprisonment. It's, it's more than Scotland Yard, no? They caught it and, and it, it's responsible, no? It's the, the most efficient police in the world. Only 3.6 established alternative sanctions, like brazaletes, bracelets, uh, or fines or reparation. The creation of a community of emotions of solidarity, counter-narration, and the colonized visualization, respect, and collaboration, which are strongly interrupted in prison, are specifically targeted by this project. The ability developed by women to assemble a visual understanding of the immense injustice they suffer speaks of the way in which women transform the prison terrain from one of severance and punishment into a collaborative one, a whole juridical, aesthetic, and cultural uprising. What I found silent in this uprising was the demarcation of irregularities in their juridical process parallel to the ways in which they rise, resist, and transform the territory of prison into a space with tones of collaboration and calls for justice. We end up with four murals, four uprisings of voice and gaze, four revelations against separation and around interruption of the ways in which time and space was experienced in prison. The cry, time, hope, and strength, path and ways of freedom and collective actions for justice. We began with an expression of indignation, dispossession and abandonment and ended with a clear call for justice. Thank you. So now we can...
querida Gloria, desde que te conocí he optado por actuar sin fronteras y logré que me encerraran aquí en Santa Marta. Pero no me arrepiento porque ahora sé transgredir. Empecé transgrediendo y apropiarme de un muro me encantó. Aprendí a hacer cosas grandes. Quiero que sepas que siempre llevo a la Coatlicue y a la Guadalupana conmigo porque he descubierto que sí me gustan mis raíces. Ya me las he apropiado. Todavía no descubro qué quiero decir porque tengo tantas, tantas cosas que decir que me gustaría que a mis hermanas del planeta supieran lo que he sentido durante toda mi vida aquí, en este planeta. Tendré que leer y volver a traducir tus fronteras para así más fácil entender cuál es mi misión como mujer mexicana Presa libre y artista. Enjoyed that that production. So, uh, questions or comments? First, thank you for that. The project is beautiful, but I wanted to ask you. I guess that the clinic keeps uh, providing legal aid right now, but does the art component have some sustainability? Have you continued working with those women? And the second question is: you, the clinic, does the clinic or the university provide support with the reentry process of the women to La Calle? Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, sustainability, it's very hard to sustain a clinic. As, as much as I talk about public university and critical university, the things that, that we do there is uh, work with students that are from many dis different disciplines and that do their dissertations, their social services, and uh, the classes we have sometimes we teach inside. So um, we use the academic practices and we kind of interrupt the academic practices so the students can go and have uh, sessions with the prisoners. So time in, in, at the university gets inter interrupted and also time at the institution, penitentiary institution gets interrupted because when we are there, they, they can stay. Uh, normally their, their day gets interrupted in four times because they get into call to roll. And when we are there, they have the, the experience of continuous time. And the students have this fragment and time to go back and forth to the, to, the, to the prison. So that is doing fantastic things that I'm trying to explain and understand. Time and space displaced, the university merging into the prison and prison merging into the university. And the university authorities are always uh, saying the work is fantastic and we are incredible and they are giving very little. They are, okay, they are allowing us to go there. They are not sanctioning the students that lose, for example, their classes on Monday. They help them to, to fail some classes. And the, yes, the experiences of, of like changing this institution in the way of, uh, they allow us to do all of this. I don't know how we deal with the prison authorities that they allow us to do all the things we do. We film, we are friends of the whole policeman, and we, it's, it's very strange. I think we could not do that in the US prisons. Uh, there's, there's something very interesting, por favor, Marcia. And, and the, the clinic support uh, in Mujeres, the Minister of, uh, of, of Gender gave us money, and the Commission of Human Rights, we are always seeking for money uh, elsewhere. And the, the university gi gave us letters and supports and palmaditas en la espalda and uh, allow us for, for keeping our job. But I think now, they, after the Catedra, Anna, they are going to help, I hope. In La Calle, we do, in a very disorganized way, we help them. The students get friends with them and they invite them to live in their places. Students uh, accept their places. It's, it's a whole, not organized, not institutional. It's because they become, fr become friends and they, they incorporate it in their families. We have nothing organized in La Calle, no? Sí, Marcial, gracias. Thank you. Made, made me have lots of thoughts and feelings. Um, you know, it, I love its optimism. 
uh, the profound <laughs> optimism of the project and also of the decisions uh, you made to represent it in the documentary. Um, I think it's kind of this kind of oda de amor. It's this love poem to Mexico. I mean, all I kept thinking was at every turn, how and why this is impossible in Chile, how and why yeah. this is impossible here, how and why this might be impossible anywhere else in the world where people have kind of referential universes. Um, how, you know, I mean, and so it really, I saw it as a note of love to like Mexican institutions at a moment when such <laughs> optimism is like, you know, kind of just it's is, is ridiculous, but amazing, like a leap of yeah. kind of utopic kind of exaltation of, of, the, of the Mexican public university, of that kind of national post-revolutionary Mexican culture that lifted muralism and made it into a national art form and placed it into all the buildings yeah. that matter and taught it to every student through its kind of public education so that then there's a genre that the guards and the artists and the professors and the, and the women that who are imprisoned have in common. I mean, the, just the set of, it just seems very, very it seems, again, impossible to imagine outside of Mexico in a way. And yeah. the, of course, in this optimism and in this kind of poema de amor, of course, that can only always exist with dialectical negatives, right? And so the only other reference I had kind of prior to this to women in prison painting walls are the dirty protests in the political prisons of Northern Ile Ireland. Uh, Begonia Arixaga, this Basque anthropologist, oh. has an extraordinary study of the use of menses and feces as form of pro protest by prisoners inside the walls of jails because optimism c is relational like everything else. And then it also made me think of Tatiana Hueso's kind of most recent documentary where she kind of has the, the narrative of two women and one of them gives a very harrowing kind of testimony about her experience in, as a woman in Mexican prisons. So anyway, I, I, I love the optimism. I think it's, it's como va como contra la corriente, el optimismo como, como elección, like a choice to show this in this yeah. way, in this yeah, time. Yeah. And, but it's, it, I think that okay. it's very hard to imagine for me outside Mexico. Yeah. So, um, like to, to make a manual, they, they want us to make a manual how to do this, no? how to re replicate this in other institutions. No, no? I mean, it's just, yeah, beautiful. It's, it's, thank you, one comment, thank you. That muchísimo gusto. One comment around this uh, short. Uh, love here uh, inside prison is, uh, productive and and it really enables them but outside they, they it was devastated so it's a paradox no when they are outside love and sexuality is very difficult and hurting and when they are inside we had a, we make another short mm -hmm. film where they talk about orgasms and they talk about different ways they are touched and and they are saying that the love in between the, they don't call them lesbians. They, they, they don't put them levels. They don't say LKTB, nothing. They said, I enjoy. <laughs> I have many orgasms. And they sing and they dance and they, and they, of course, this love is, and they are here. I, I read in the paper the reasons, no? L love is the first step that makes women criminals, but it's the love that is outside prison. That, that hooks them into this illegal um, business. And, and another thing that is very interesting is to work through docility, right? To work through docility and through motherhood and through color. But we are working, when, the, when we study the cases and we study the context and, and they bring their, their tensions to La Palapa, to this patio where we started with our walls, things begin to happen. And contiguity and hearing each other, it, it's not that they hate justice and that they hate their husband. And, 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 and it's not only through love and songs, but it's through some kind of docility that is, of course, fosters in prisons. But uh, the, the way of working through motherhood and family and love uh, and uh, of course, with a counter avenue of texts uh, from Gloria Saldua and the letters to write and the and the and the, the concept uh, such as la facultad to see uh, in the site and el mundo zurdo donde todo convive. Chicanas have been very helpful. 
Sí, alguien quería preguntar algo atrás, que ya no quiero... Sí, sí, acá. I wanted to ask you to speak some about the importance of reciprocity in the, uh, the work uh, represented here. And um, uh, I think the reciprocity from the perspective of um, the, the importance of the university in, in the prison here and your interest in uh, a reciprocal relationship so that what a prison can be changes, but also what a university can be changes. So I, I know that the time yes, and space of both you. the university and Th the prison is, is an important thank dimension you. of this. Thank you, Penny. Um, I know mm. that the students involved in the project um, uh, and, and for academics involved in the project, it's very important to you that it's not that a course or a syllabus is brought to a university, um, as in some other models of, of projects uh, within uh, yeah. prisons, but that there'd be a, a very mutual transformation of, of the process of, of si, pedagogy. Si, si, si. And, and I wanted to ask you about how, how you um, work to, to get that kind of reciprocity, that, that, that mutual um, uh, transformation of, of, of student and professor and mur muralist and prisoner. So some of the sí. process involved in, in, in generating that, which I, I know is so important to this project. Yes. Um, good. Reciprocity is built, reciprocity means that both institutions, academia and prison, are, are involved, right? And students and prisoners are involved. So what, what we try to do is to figure out through, mostly through the women in prison, a product that we wanna, a theme that we wanna work in a year. For example, the, uh, two years ago, they wanted to, to understand labor in prison and labor outside, no? And this is sexist, this sexism and the sexist uh, relation of the vision of labor that is outside. But then inside, everything changes, like love, no? So we, we decided to do a fun scene on labor conditions. So the students, and, and we decided then in our classes, we were like replying partially and we were doing also a fanzine. And um, the students, we, we take turns because there are many students. We take turns to go to prison and some of them go and some of them stay. So the students have the experience of going to prison and, and the experience of, of this, um, of uh, some type of incarcerations and they focus on the university on the, and, and on knowledge and on text and on concepts when they are circulated in this patio. No? So we read Antigon in the classroom and then how does Antigon get turned when you read it with the prisoners in the patio, no? in the prison patio. So this kind of reciprocity, no? these displacements of the tragedy in the classroom and the tragedy with the women in prison. And students write, think, make the dissertation, also time, for example, time and space. The students are their in their classroom and then the classroom is displaced to the, to the patio. Their time, they have to manage the time in a different way. The, the, prisoner, the women in prison have to also the opportunity of, of living uninterrupted time and of being students. So it's not that students uh, get transformed in prisoners, that, that is n n not possible, but they have this relation with um, unbounded space in bounded uh, places, and they select to write their dissertations uh, about the, the, the precise processes that uh, were happening there. And of course, here, for example, it's very interesting in the, the American experience, which is I, I, I admire and, and I wish we, we had that experience also, is this is the institution. One professor goes and there's no contamination or contagion. The professor goes and teaches and then comes back. And, but it's aseptic. It, there, there's, there's nothing that he brings probably for him, no? For him in his, in his interior, in, in, in his body, in his sensation, there are many changes. But it, it would be interesting to know if these professors get changed and they, they, they have methodologies of, uh, they begin to rehearse, rehearse another pedagogy when they are with prisoners, no? Because prisoners are awesome when they are in class. They are the best. They go uh, perfume and, and bañados and relucientes and luminous to class, no? So it must change and touch the professor that go there. There is, there is no way that they get in touch. But probably uh, th we need to know what happened to the professors that go to, to, the, to, to, to prison, no? It's, it's a long way there and a long way back. Let's see. Hello, good evening. Uh, it might be too soon, but with the new Mexican government, have you seen any improvement in the legal system? Thank you. Uh, they, give, uh, they give us money for this project. 
Cacahuates, peanuts. You have that word, peanuts, for money? Okay, p I li peanuts. Uh, no, you know what they did? Of course, they. I, I'm so thankful they give us money, but you know what they did? They, uh, uh, oh God, they, they expanded prison f in order to get uh, the, the bad guys, in order to issue some security. They made go to prison more easier. So they, they uh, only pointing is the reason. And they are also loading uh, and putting more years to, to, to m m misdeeds. No, they, they don't understand nothing related to prison. They understood our project, thanks God. But, uh, that was in the city, right? In the city, the, it's another thing, Mexico City. Thanks God, the governor, no, la jefa de gobierno is, is, a, is an academic actually. It's an engineer, so she's understanding things better. But uh, the, the actual government in relation to prisons, bad, bad. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for this powerful documentary uh, that, that shows a segment of uh, the prisoner sharing their feeling uh, towards uh, this project. And the question I have is, when you run out of walls, how are you going to proceed <laughs> with this project? <laughs> Thank you. Well, w th we actually run out of walls, and, and it is a process of five years, Anna. Sorry, I did not respond. Almost six years of painting, uninterrupted. But we, we then, from the wall, we transit to paper, and they make the transition. What does it mean? And we did fanzines. And then we, the, we did Diccionarios Caneros. The language in prison is really awesome. The, the, it's a, a lot of different words get constructed, sexual words in relation to drug, to drugs. 48, cuidado, 48 means that the, the police is coming to get your drug. And they have everything figured out. So we did a dictionary. And we did two documentaries on Antigon and on La Llorona. They pick up these women that are bad treated, mistreated, and they want to and, we're, and, and they want to impersonate them. And we're doing this year a bestiario. Bestiario is um, a book of the 17th century where Spain, uh, the conquerors, were painting their imaginary, uh, were m giving space to their ma imagination and, and painting animals or people as animals and all this, but, but with superpowers. And women are called mulas, um, buos th in, the in the drug dealing business, you know, they are, and, and also gatas when they are maids. The, the bestialization of women is big, so we are going to do this bestiario. They are, they are figuring out the animals as they want to be with their superpowers. And we have all these artists that are going to help them to, to make, uh, I, and we are going to bring this bestiario to the Supreme Court, to the ministers of justice, to tell them uh, what are the crimes, what are the superpowers, who are these women, what is the context. It's a, it's a really, it's a very joyful and very intense, uh, also many times sad job. I had the misfortune of working for four months on Rikers Island in a prison, I and so I, I, I loved seeing the way your project empowered the women and, and seemingly brought them to life. What I'm wondering is, I didn't see, like, I didn't feel a context for the women, the suffering. It seemed so uplifting. Most of the film seems so uplifting mm -hmm. in how they were transformed into a feeling of more power and understanding. But what was their life like? Like how, how many women out of the whole, the whole prison, how many did this represent? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you for that question. You know, uplifting is big. They, they, they go in the scaffolds and they actually uprise, no? So this, this precise five years every week, the overtaking of the world was something extraordinary. Of course, they have a lot of problems. They eat very badly. They don't have water many times. They, it's, uh, it's very dirty. They have a lot of insects. The, the health service is lousy. They have problems with their teeth. They have problems with their feet. They have problems with uh, their eyes. They, they are very sick. They are uh, also very nervous and they take a lot of drugs. And, and and they they take in, they inhale and they have a very cheap cocaine, it's bad. Mm. How many but uh, seventeen hundred. Wow. 
um, and uh, we work with almost 300 in the five years. Some of them were there and did, did that a little bit and, and went off, and we counted them. So probably the ones that work, work, work were about 60 or 50 in the, but it, it was like a century petal force because they called for, come on, you can, you can draw something. And they were helping each other to do the designs. And this kind of conversation on your design and my design, your case, my case, your husband, my husband, and then, of course, your mouth, my mouth, your hand, my hand. And it, it developed in a <laughs> very interesting uh, body contact also. No, that was also interesting. So is, this is an ongoing project. See, see till right. today we're doing the bestiario right. how did you translate bestiario bestiary a bestiary it's a, it's an uh, it's a, i think it's a great yeah. idea because they are always related to animals no and they bestialize them no i think this has yeah. been one of the most remarkable and we've been to a few uh, thank you oh man andres bello and kjc presentations thank, thank you. you so much thank really you, thank you everyone <laughs> thank you